Hey there, I'm Jason, and today I want to talk to you about why I went with game programming over game design for a career. I see the question get asked all the time, should I study game design, should I study game programming, or maybe even study just general programming? And a lot of people seem to be really confused about what the differences are, what the different jobs actually entail, and what it's like. And today I want to talk about, well, why I went with what I went with, how that kind of happened, which was somewhat accidental. And I want to talk about what designers and programmers do day to day, what the differences are in their jobs, some of the little bit of similarities, and some of the benefits of each side, so you can get a better idea of what's good for you and where you should go. So I want to start with my experience. When I started off in the game industry, I really wanted to be a game designer. I didn't really want to do programming. It wasn't something that was super interesting to me. I knew how to code a little bit. I'd written a little bit of code and some apps, little programs, not phone apps, but like old school DOS apps and Windows apps and G15 apps for my old keyboard to play games or log parsers to get data on the games that I was playing. But game programming wasn't something I'd ever considered. I just kind of assumed like, hey, you got to be like a mega genius to do that stuff. It's way too hard. I'd never be able to do it. And I really like the design side. I want to make you know, characters and classes and stories and enemies and set up these big giant fights that people can battle in and get together with and have friends and you know I really wanted to do MMO design specifically so I went in for an interview oh goodness I don't remember when it was it was a long long time ago though I went for a game design interview that went actually pretty well I thought I, I don't know I could have been completely naive and crazy and it was terrible but it seemed like it went great and uh, I thought, hey, you know, this is it. I'm going to maybe become a game designer. I, flew to, I remember I flew down to Las Vegas to go to this game design interview that was at an event. It went great. And they're like, hey, we're going to call you next week and talk to you a little bit about it. And I, I never heard back. I was like, oh, what happened? Like, why, why didn't I get a call back? And I occasionally email the guy and ping him and stuff. Later, I found out that um, almost immediately after that, he, the guy that I'd been talking to left the company, went somewhere else. So I don't know if it was um, accidental and just you know, got dropped because, hey, things change. And you know, if you leave a company, you don't really care about getting, hiring people for the other one. Or um, if I just totally bombed it and thought I had done much better. So my first game design interview, like I said, went great, but I did not get the job. After that, I decided, well, I'm going to try a little bit more programming stuff. And I went into just software that was not for games. I was still programming little game things for myself, little game tools, but not really actually doing game development or anything. And, um, well, long story short, that little bit of programming accidentally also led me into a game programming job doing game tools, and things kind of snowballed from there. And I really didn't know it at the time, but game programming was kind of perfect for me because it allowed me to do a lot of things that I never could have been able to do as a game designer. And it gave me a lot of flexibility. It also really played to strengths that I didn't realize I had until I kind of fell into the position of, hey, you got to make these things work, figure it out. So let me talk real briefly, though, about what a game programmer does day to day. And then I want to talk about what a game designer does. So as a programmer, there are quite a few things that you need to do. Depending on the level of programmer that you're at, um, you, it's going to vary quite a bit and the specialties and the size of the company. For a small little startup company, like say you're a, a team of one to three developers, you're going to be doing all kinds of things. You have to start off with a plan for how you're going to build out the game. You know, how are you going to architect this thing? What are you going to put together? What engine are you going to use? What systems are you going to use? How is everything going to get all tied together? You have to code all of these systems, of course, so you're constantly just writing code in C Sharp or C++, depending on the game engine that you're using. And you need to be learning about these things all the time, too. You can't just learn how to code once and then be done. It's not like a... Um, it's not a one and done type skill. It's something that you're constantly learning at. All good programmers that I know are learning almost something, something new at least every week and often something new every day. Um, but a bigger part of what you're doing is working with the game designers and the production team. You're taking their ideas and their documents that they've written, which we'll talk about in just a minute, and you're turning those into actual executing code. You're making it so that 
their vision comes to life on a screen and in a game and is interactable and fun to play. Um, you also work with artists a lot. Now, depending on the team size, you may or may not work with artists very much. You might be um, a team where you've got art-specific programmers, and those guys generally work heavily on the graphic side and the art pipeline. It's almost like a specialty in a big company. In smaller companies, again, you'll be doing a bit of that as well, but you'll do less of it or almost none of it if you're in a giant company where you're working on different systems. So what, one of those other systems I, I think I should talk about, and one of the easiest ways to get into game programming is doing tools development, which is actually how I started off. I actually started doing QA tools, then moved into design tools, and then moved into design and game, or not really design, but gameplay stuff. So building tools is, um, it's pretty interesting and it's a lot of fun and it's relatively easy to do for a new programmer. What you're doing is setting up systems or specific little applications so that the game designers can take their ideas and turn that into data that's either stored in the game or in a database or in some file somewhere. A lot of the time this will be like text files or a um, SQL or NoSQL server that's got a lot of data there. Um, sometimes it's just building tools that are like in editor tools. If you use Unity a lot, you'd be building custom Unity editors, tools like that, so that the designers can go in and do their job efficiently. You gotta remember that the designers are not gonna be programmers, they're not gonna be looking at the code, and they're gonna want a nice, simple, fast interface. And that's kind of the key thing as a tool builder or tool developer. You wanna build stuff that makes it so that designers can work really, really fast. Making designers fast is really part of your job as a tool developer. You want to make it so that the game can get finished. It's a undervalued, I'd say, and underrated game development job that actually is extremely important and something that is, like I said, relatively easy to get into because most game programmers aren't super interested in tools development. The other thing you can do as a, well, there's graphics, there's tools. The other biggest thing that you'll see often is uh, gameplay programming. And that's when you're putting together all of the systems and just building the code for the game, making it so that you, know, you move around and stuff animates and characters jump and input works and game systems work and combat works. You're doing all of the, I would say, more fun and more exciting stuff. I know some people really love the graphic stuff. Some people really love tool stuff. I really love gameplay things because I get to make it so that the designer's ideas of how this thing is gonna work actually happens and players can play it. So let's talk a little bit about designers. What does a game designer do day to day? It's um, actually very, very, very different. It's nothing like being a programmer. Game designers generally talk a lot and they write a lot. So they're working with other game designers often to brainstorm out ideas and figure out a general system or flow of how they want things to work and how they want systems to interact. But they're also a lot alone just writing documentation for these ideas. They also need to do a ton of um, playing games and experimenting. To be honest, if you really love playing all kinds of different games and you're like a game addict that wants to go out and try everything, you know, you want to play every different game and you really like seeing all of the differences between the games and you can explain why one game is slightly better than the other because of a certain grab system, game design might be kind of perfect for you because that's the, um, that's the job, right? The job is understanding what's out there, understanding what's fun, and then figuring out how to make the fun appear in the game that you're building on. I mean, really, that's the job of a game designer is to make the game fun. But there are a lot of other little day-to-day -day things that you're doing, like communicating with the art team, right? If you're designing things, you're generally coming up with a rough concept of what it is. You're not drawing the things out, but you might be thinking like, hey, these are, you know, maybe this is a dinosaur game and these are the types of dinosaurs that we want. We want something that's kind of like a pterodactyl but has six extra legs or tentacles or something. And you're working with the artists to get concepts done and then get the final art looking how you expect it to look so that the world kind of blends together. Of course, you're working with artists a lot on the art style and they have a lot of input and direction on it, but you're still coming up with the core things that are actually in the game. So you're designing like what the objects are, what the levels are, what the characters are. You're also implementing some of that stuff. So at the base level, think of level design. You have to create levels. You might be drawing out maps on paper or on a computer at first, and then they're getting put into the game by artists or by designers sometimes, and they're just building up these levels, but not just 
like the base level, all of the things in the level. So you're putting down all of the props. A lot of the time you're putting in the particle systems that are there, the fire that's at every single barrel. You're doing a lot of the, um, I would say almost like the grunt work, but it's not really grunt work for game designers. They tend to love it and they do a really good job at it. And these are things that I personally, as a programmer, am pretty bad at. And I'd say most programmers are bad at it. If you watch a programmer design a level and then you send in a good game designer to do a little bit of work on the level, it looks like you, know, you went from kindergarten to college. The, the difference in quality is just dramatic. Of course, you can get the same kind of thing with an artist. Artists can do great level design as well, but usually designers are the best at it because they'll come up with not just visuals that look really pretty, but they're thinking about exactly how the game is going to flow, where the player is going to move, what their view is going to look like from every angle. So they're like, hey, if I go around this corner, what am I actually seeing when I look back out? Because that's an important thing to make the game you know, all cohesive and entertaining. Um, they could also be doing implementation like just creating tons and tons of enemies and NPCs or tweaking damage values. You know, if you're building a MOBA, they're designing the new characters that are coming out and thinking about all of the interactions between that character and the existing ones, doing the balance changes that need to be done. And really, mainly their job is just to make the game fun. It's not an easy job. Don't get me wrong. Like it's it sounds like an easy job. It sounds like a, a fun job. I think it is a probably a very fun job, but doing game design well is not easy. Anybody can do game design. Most people can't do it well. I can do game design. I am not a good game designer. I've been working in the industry for a very long time. I think that a lot of people think that just because they play games, though, that game design is going to be easy for them, and I think that for some subset it will be, but most people really underestimate the amount of energy and skill and effort that really goes into being a good game designer. And I'd say number one, get lots of experience, understand the markets, understand what the games are out there and what makes them fun. If you don't know what makes the games fun, it can be a lot harder to reproduce that. In fact, um, if you're still watching, I'm going to put a link to the Game Design Zen podcast. I, I think that that's a good introduction into how to make games fun and kind of how that all flows together. So just look for that down in the comments below. And if you're interested in more game design stuff too, let me know. I'll talk about it, maybe even get some game designers on here to explain what it's like a little bit more. Now, now I want to talk about some of the benefits of game design versus programming because they're both great jobs, I think, and I, I think that it's a blast to be in either one of them. But there are some real differences in how they work and what the ups and downs of them are. So if you're a game designer, I think that the biggest benefits are that it's just a lot of fun, right? You're going in, unless you're doing minor tweaks and adjustments or a lot of grunt work like making thousands and thousands of recipes because the tools are too hard to use to make it automatic, um, it can be a blast, right? You're just going in and coming up with all these crazy ideas and then somebody makes them real or you're helping make them real yourself. The other real big benefit is that game designers tend to be the ones that get really famous and popular, right? Like you go to a gaming convention, it's the game designer, you know, that's up there in the front talking there. Everybody's all excited about their awesome ideas. And it's because they're generally good, outgoing people that are a lot of fun to interact with and they have really cool ideas and people want to pick their brain. And they well, designed and came up with the idea that everybody thought was fun. There are probably some other benefits to game design. Um, I'm not really sure what, what what else to list though. I can't think of a whole lot other than it's just a blast and yeah, <laughs> it seems like a lot of fun. You also, I guess, don't have to code, right? Like you don't need to necessarily know how to code. You don't need any of that stuff. And I'd say it's probably, um, it, it's, it's really just you're applying the skills of the thing that you love to do, playing games. So let's talk about the benefits of programming though and why I recommend programming to anybody who I think it's a good fit for it. If they can do it, I recommend it. Um, the first one is very, very obvious, which is that game programmers tend to get paid more. I would say on average, you'll probably start at double the pay rate just as a new, new developer from what I've seen. That could vary. Of course, some companies, it's going to dramatically vary. And it's going to level out a bit more at the top level. But um, starting off as a game programmer, you're going to make a lot more than you will as a game designer. If you just look at the jobs and the intro salaries, you'll see that, that they're quite a bit higher. And if you're interested, by the way, in um, 
jobs or just the pay for programming stuff. I was thinking about doing a video about that too. So just drop a comment, let me know. And if there are enough of them, I'll do that just on how game developers actually make money and how much money they actually make. Um, it's also easier to get a job though. So as a game designer going in, it's very hard if you don't have experience to show that you know how to do game design. And there are a ton of people applying for every game design job. There are dozens or probably hundreds of applicants. And it's because everybody that plays a game, like I said, they all think that they should be the game designer. They all have ideas and everybody wants to share their ideas. There's nothing wrong with that, but there's a lot more competition. There are way less people applying for programming jobs. I mean, there's still a good number, but it's nowhere near the rate that you're going to see for um, game design so programming is much easier to get into, and especially if you go in through tools. If you just look for tools jobs and you kind of get a little bit of experience just so that you can do the job, it's much easier to just get into the, the industry and get into a company there. And personally, I also find it a lot easier to evaluate your own skills as a programmer or to have your skills evaluated. I think that with design, it's very, very subjective, and it's hard to tell if you're doing good or getting better, at least for me. And as a programmer, I find it very easy because as you get better as a programmer, things just become dramatically easier. You're doing the same thing and it's no longer confusing. It's nice and simple and easy. With design, I think it's a little bit harder because you have to know whether or not it's fun and you have to get other people's feedback on whether or not it's fun. It's good to get other people's feedback in programming, but I think you can self-evaluate and self-learn quite a bit more. You can also do some other things that you just can't do as a game designer, like build your own games. If you want to design a game and you know, maybe you're a designer and you have this idea for a game, you generally have to find somebody to program it. You're not going to be able to build it yourself. Some designers can do it. Very, very, very few. And most of the time they really struggle with it. If you're a programmer who has some design ideas and you want to build that out, you can do it relatively easily and probably pretty quickly, especially if you have an idea that you just want to prototype out. You've got like, hey, I think that this would be a really fun concept. I want to prototype it out. I'm not even worried about art. You can build that really, really fast. And you can just kind of make your ideas appear on the screen and share them much easier than you can as a designer, which is really one of my favorite things because I just I come up with an idea and I'm like, hey, I want to make this happen. I know, hey, I can do that whenever I want. If I want to make this little game or this thing, I can do that. Whether or not it'll be fun, no idea. <laughs> Probably not. And I'll, usually what I'll do is I'll build them. I'll get it kind of working and then I'll go, hey, game designer buddies, um, can you tell me how to make this not suck and make it fun? And then they just come in with a flurry of ideas that are great and fix things up and make stuff a lot better. But there's one other thing I think that is important to talk about here with programming as a benefit, and that's that even outside of game development, if you can build games, if you can code games, you can get a job doing other programming. And it'll, it might pay more. A lot of the time it does. Sometimes it doesn't, though. There are plenty of game dev jobs that pay well. Like I said, if you're interested in that, drop a comment and I'll talk more about it later. But you can get jobs outside of the game industry just working on general software. You can work on enterprise stuff. You can work on web stuff. You can work on just about any kind of code because once you get into the mindset of programming, it's not very hard to make a switch. And if you're doing game programming and you make a switch out of game programming, you'd be surprised how much simpler it is. You know, people talk about game dev like it's, um, like it's an easy thing sometimes, but it's dramatically harder than regular programming, I'd say. Every time I've done a switch, and I've gone back and forth multiple times to like, hey, I don't know, I don't, maybe I want to try non-game stuff for a little while. Every single time I went from like, this is fun, interesting, challenging, to this is extremely easy. Like, this is so easy that like I, it's almost autopilot, and I can just go do game stuff on the side in my spare time because I don't have to think too much about the enterprise stuff. And I think that a lot of that is just because the constraints most of the time are dramatically lower than when you're working on a game. In a game, you have to be high performant. You have to be bug free. Well, not just bug free, but you have to ship constantly with good releases. You can't, um, you can't just auto update. Well, you could, but you'll lose players, right? With an enterprise thing, it's very easy to go through and iterate and just 
But really, it's not even about that. It's mostly just that the code is much, much simpler. The problems that you're solving are much simpler, and they generally tend to be in isolation, where in games, everything is working together, and all these systems are tied together, and it gets much more confusing. Of course, I'm sure there are plenty of really advanced, really confusing and complicated enterprise and web jobs out there. Don't get me wrong. I know that they exist, but the majority of them are very, very, very simple. If you can do game programming, you can easily do, I'd say, probably 90% of other programming jobs with just a little bit of training on maybe the language and the, the systems that they're using. So it's a big benefit of um, if something goes wrong, you have an easy, safe fallback. Now, that said, I would recommend just staying in game development and don't just try to jump over to non-game stuff because it's really just a lot more fun, a lot more rewarding, and um, those are the two biggest things that I think are important. Uh, you should enjoy your job, and it should be something that you're proud of and happy to do, and not something that you dread or don't want to go to. And you should, if you ever find yourself in that situation where you're like, hey, I don't want to go to work anymore. This sucks. I'm not going to go to work today. Try being a game programmer. You know, get into it. Get used to it. And if you're in that position as a game programmer and you hate it, um, find a new company that, that you like working at. Find a new project and enjoy it. Because game programming, you know, you're making stuff to make other people happy and let other people have fun. You should do the same while you're at it. Anyway, I'm going to shut up now. If you have questions about this stuff, though, or like I said, if you're interested in the, the pay side of this stuff, just let me know. Drop a comment. Hit the share button. Like it and all that stuff. And also... Almost forgot. I wanted to say thanks to everybody on Patreon. Um, I'm going to put something special up there soon. It's been a little while. Anyway, thanks again. Goodbye.